one special problem. No one. Everyone's let me down. Yeah, no. No, there is no one. I've tried. No, I've, I've, I've kept coding.
Let's see the second one. Punter player just sees the ball over the boundary line. So we'll have a boundary throw in just at the left side of your screen. Here today at Dutton Park, Kapunda, home of today's game. Ball in. Neither Ruckman able to get a clear clearance. And Angerson player wrapped up, possibly high, but the umpire was unsighted. So we'll have a ball up. Just on the half forward line. And Whistler working hard in the ruck. And just another stacks on. So we'll have a repeat ball up. And free kick paid there. Going the way of Angerston. Jay Shannon, the playing coach, driving the ball forward. Right to the line, ball spoiled, just spills out of play. The boundary line just around from the point post in Angerson's forward line. Actually a point registered, so kick in for Kapunda. Coming to the near side. And cut off. Handball. 
quick chip back to Tom Ryan, who now gets to drive the ball forward. Goes with the left foot. Well defended. Early fly from Brad Valentine. Balls spills out over the boundary line. Centre wing on the commentary side. With me in commentary today, I've got Glenn Johns. Glenn, how are you? Very cold, Mike. You could work for the Weather Bureau with work like that. It's been showery here today with a little bit of sun. Yes, the rain has eased for now, so hopefully that stays away. And big Aaron Whistler grabbing his opposition ruckman by around the chest, almost dragging him to ground before the ball gets there. Quick kick from half-back, forward for Kapunda. No, no player able to gather. Ari Regney picks the ball up and is wrapped up straight away. Taken high, I felt, but the umpire he letting ducked, it go. He did duck into it a little bit. Just a little, but Slipped he is only a little it. fella. Yeah, it's true. He can stand on a ladder and he'd still look like he's ducking into it. Good sliding pick up there. Harry, Harry Watke. He hands the ball back to the umpire. Umpire Herman about to ball up. Whistler with a big tap. Couple of handballs from Kapanda, but a strong tackle. Tom Ryan able to contain that. Followed by another tackle on the outer side. And these wet, slippery conditions, neither team able to get clean football. So we're going to see a lot of this today. Going to be ball up after ball up. Going to be a very strong physical contest between two teams that are struggling in 2022. Not really contending for the Premiership. Probably not going to play finals either team. But both in rebuilding phase. Ball comes loose. And trickles out over the boundary again, so we'll have a boundary throw in almost in front of the scoreboard. Got the old scoreboard next to the current digital one here at Kapanda. And a very unique sort of ground here, Glenn. Viewers will notice that slight downhill slope to the right of screen. I can notice it from here, so hopefully they can notice it. I'd yeah. say it's a 14, 15 goal advantage. That's a little ridiculous. Kapandra play their home ground really well. They're usually two or three goals better at home. So Angus is going to have to work pretty hard if they want to find a way out of this today. Sorry, I meant point advantage. And beautiful work there. Straight through. Kicking to the Justin San Andrea outbodies his opponent. Gets the handball off. Harry Watke with a flying shot on goal. He's offline. San Andrea really dangerous in the forward line. Just held his opponent out with his body and just protected the drop of the ball. Jaden Antony to bring the ball back in for Angerston. Plays on from fullback. Goes down the outer side. Goes over the top of Jack Miles. And we'll have a boundary throw in just outside the 50 metre arc in Kapunda's attacking end. Tom Haslett's just come on. Ari Rigney sort of half limping off. Don't know if he got injured there or not. Uh, Rigney was the one taken heavily in a tackle a little earlier at half forward. Could be a little bit sore from that, but if he doesn't come back, that's a huge loss for the Bombers. He's one of their best inside mids. It's a bit proppy coming out, so... We'll keep an eye on that. Angus is moving the ball forward now. Well defended by Kapunda there. Big fly. Kick off the deck. Is that Summerton? Yes, Stephen Summerton, the former Port Adelaide captain. Very clever footballer. Smart to not try and pick up the ball under pressure today. And Angerson register another point. So on the ground of uh, the birds for the scoreboard, Angerson two points, leading Kapunda one solitary point. Kapunda clearing now to the wing. 
Strong mark taken. Quick handball back in board. Strong tackling. Initially Tom Ryan, then Zach Graham, I think. Ned Grieve with a strong, powerful tackle, not letting the Kapunda players get through. Zach Graham trying to break through. Aaron Whistler still getting his hands first to the football. Gets it down to a teammate, but Tom Ryan able to collect that ball. Graham went, Graham went from tackle to tackler in that one. Yes, Graham, son of a very, very talented footballer in Quinton Graham. That's as the ball cool. comes into our commentary area, and Sam, the cameraman, had his first touch for the season. Well done, Sam. Good one too, Sam. It was almost clean. He's got more steps than you, I think, Mike. He has, but I wasn't willing to go for that ball. I didn't want to spill my drink. Ball goes down just inside the boundary line, but now coughed up and over the line, so we'll have a boundary throw in near the 50-metre arc in Angerson's attacking end of the field. Neither team willing to let the ball out into the open at the moment. It's going to be congested play all day, it's, I predict. This ball comes over the back. That's why we call you Nostradamus, Mike. Solid prediction there. Ball wrapped up in another strong tackle, so we'll see a ball up near the centre-half forward area. A little bit of wrestling going on. Always a bit of feeling in these wet weather games. Players do like to get the body a involved. Bit of at the back, yeah, yep. Yeah. Just feeling each other out early in the game. And Aaron Whistler with a massive punch. Falls to Jaden Antony, who kicks the ball forward on his left. Unable to find a teammate. See Dylan Tuckwell fighting with his Kapunda opponent, and he's wrapped and taken to the ground by Brad Valentine, the super veteran from Kapunda. Quick clear and kick for Kapunda coming down to the wing. Tom Ryan, courageous mark, going back with the flight of the bowl. Ryan's got options aplenty. Just go in towards centre half forward and well topped off by Kapunda. Ball comes into the middle of the ground. Callum Brown. Callum Brown. Oh, sorry, Liam Opitz, I think that was. Liam Opitz with a clear and kick out to the outer side. So Kapunda looking to move the ball now. Chopped off. Ratcliffe took that mark. Henry Radcliffe, one of the young players in this Panthers team, finds his playing coach Jay Shannon in the middle of the ground. Shannon now assessing his options. Kicks the ball back out towards the wing. No clear gather. Kapunda driving the ball forward again. A strong mark taken there. Zan Andrea breaking out outside of the forward 50. Angus will be happy for him to get his touches up there. Kicks the ball in high. A lot of players fly. No one makes contact. Comes out the back. Angus and player at the back gathers the ball, but he's bundled over. Might have copped one in the head there. Might have copped that definitely in the head, but as the said player gets up rubbing his head. It's a tough game. That's why we love it. See a boundary throw in inside Kapunda's forward line. No, we've got a free kick from last touch. Ball floats through for a minor score. That ties the scores up at two points each on the Burge Barossa scoreboard here at Kapunda. Your live stream game of the day. As Jacob Fiebiger looks to bring the ball back in for Anguston. Get some really good distance on that. Probably sends it 60 metres down to the wing. Angus Adams with a strong tackle there, the Ruckman at the bottom of the pack. Whistler continuing to dominate the ruck contests. But no, uh, no advantage for the Bombers, not able to get clear footy. So we'll see another stoppage on the outer wing. 
currently played nearly 12 minutes on the Ray White Craigmore time clock. Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs, but not just the northern suburbs. Joe Cirillo will sell your property just about anywhere. Good man to get in touch with. He's a great salesman. He's a good family man, and he will help your family into the property you want. Ball in now. Adam Turrell, the undersized Kapunda Ruckman in the ruck now. Soccer off the ground. Clear yeah. forward, picked up by Carnelli. Carnelli. Hacks the ball around the corner. See now, looks like a free kick has been paid. Angerson's way. No, right. ball in. I think it's the 45th ball in of the game so far. Good stats work there, Glenn. Yeah, 37. 37, thanks. Sam. Okay, so, uh, I trust Sam. Summerton almost able to claim that ball when no no one else had touched it. Wucky on the bottom of the pack. Wucky spends a lot of time on the bottom of the pack. A really good young player, just keeps going all day. Love the way he goes about it. Turrell with a tap out. A good tap out. Finds advantage. Rigney in the middle of the ground. He drives the ball forward. And Ben Antoni able to push his opponent under the ball. Clear him with that beautiful left foot of his. Finds his brother Jaden who wheels around onto his right. Into the middle of the ground. Finds Summerton with a quick handball off to Sam Hood. Sorry, Jake Hood. Kicks the ball forward. Don't want to give Sam any credit. He hasn't played footy in years. Panda moving the ball out now. That was disappointing. It was the first good streaming bit of play from either team. Yes. Both teams attacking the ball hard. Ned Greaves going over there. Kabunda player possibly took his legs out, but umpires just seeing that as part of the game. Now we have umpire Herman with another ball up. Uh, Angus and Ruckman was shoved out of the contest by Brad Valentine. And a high tackle there. Play a wrench to the ground. We see Jackson Murphy now kick that ball forward. Angerson, that's a terrible kick forward. Finds only Kapunda. Mark taken. Now they clear out to the defensive side of the ground. Kapunda now looking to keep possession, but that's a poor kick. Winds up in a contest. We'll have a ball up almost at centre half forward at Angerson's end of the ground. Kapunda really should have done better with that. They had time, they had space. They had people streaming. They had players everywhere. Really disappointing kick. And Jason McKenzie would be really frustrated. Who who did Car kick that? Carnelli, I think. Ryan it was. Carnelli, the young wingman. Pretty much out of nothing, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, just popped out of nowhere. That's why I wasn't sure who had finally kicked it. He's picked it up and banged on his boot and went straight through. So, Angerson with the first goal of the game, moved to one goal, two, eight points, leading Kapunda two behinds on the Birds of Arossa scoreboard. And that goal, of course, brought to you by Ray White Craigmore, the premiership team in real estate. Turrell up against Alex Roberts, the new ruckman at Angerson this season. Kick around the corner from Dylan Tuckwell. Ball smashed down by the Kapunda defender. No one able to get the two hands to that ball. Players at the bottom of the pack wrestling. As we see Tuckwell at the bottom of the pack. Another ball up from umpire Herman. Adam Turrell just holding out the much bigger Roberts. Turrell, a very unconventional ruckman, has been stymieing much more fancied opponents for many years out here in the BLG. Just holds the space beautifully. Doesn't leap at the ball. Hasn't got the juice in his knees. But just wins so many tap outs as he did there. Why play hard when you can play smart, Mike? I wouldn't call him smart. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. 
But yeah, he is very, very good at his craft and just has been a magnificent servant of the Kapunda Footy Club. Jay Shannon with that clearing ball. Finds a teammate, Kalaloki, who smashes the ball forward. And Kapunda coming back out now. Sean Bell finds Rigney in the middle of the ground. He takes some diving mark, so he'll get up and Angerson. I don't think it was a mark, if it was touched or not 15. But. Oh, umpire didn't pay the mark. Zach Heinz Younger come onto the field now for Angerson, replacing Jaden Antoni, who's having a rest. Ball coming out now, finds Haslett. Tom Haslett. Takes the mark. So we can come down this wing. A lot of players under this football. Three Angerson players to one Kapunda player. Probably poorly organised by the Panthers. That's a very high tackle on Hood. Really lazy, sloppy effort. Made no effort to get down. Hood now looking to penetrate forward. Probably kicked it off his shin a little bit. Blenkine under the ball, unable to take it. See another ball, yet another ball up. This time, probably 35 metres out from Angerson's goal, almost directly in front. Whistler went down with one hand to try and pick that up. Ball hacked forward, Grieve underneath it, unable to take the mark as he was going back with the flight. Great handball back there. Carnelli now runs around. Kicks around his body on the right. Found a teammate, but he was unable to juggle that mark. Carnelli backs up. Gets a little chip kick. Hits a teammate, Tuckwell. Probably too far out to score. He's probably at least 45 metres out where he took the mark. So he'd be kicking from around the 50. Probably a little bit beyond him from what I've seen. I reckon he's a bit closer than that, Mike. I reckon it's probably just there. We'll see if you're right. I think he might look to try and spot up to the goal square. See Heinz Younger coming back off now after a real short burst on the field. Distance, not accuracy, Distance, eh? Distance, not a problem, but accuracy was as he had to really strain to get the ball there. Kapunda will look to bring the ball out again. Interesting to see what tactic they decide, whether they're going to keep persisting down the attacking side. And they do. Callum Brown, the big flyer. Grieve at the back of the pack, picks it up but kicks it into a player. And Cal Loki with a little mark around out the back. Just smart play. Kicks the ball forward now. And Jaden Antony takes a mark unopposed. He wheels around onto the right and bangs it into space. Summerton now has the ball. He plays on, kicks the goal. That's the second goal of the day for Ray White Craigmore. Angus now moved to two goal three, 15, playing leading Kapunda to two solitary points on the Birds for Ross's scoreboard. And the, with the rain gone now, perfect conditions for footy. No breeze, temperatures not too cold. This is ideal footy conditions, Glenn. Well, it might be ideal footy conditions. It's still not ideal commentating conditions, Mike. It's, there's no such thing. We love it. Ball back in the middle. Whistler back in the ruck now. But Blenkine able to... Oh, sorry, Roberts able to get his hand to the footy with the back tap. Quickly wrapped up, so umpire Herman will ball it up again. Whistler with a tap. No one able to clear. High tackle there, directly in the view of umpire Herman. Loki, it was giving that free away. So Kapunda now pushed the ball into their forward line. Zan Andrea flies, got both hands to it, but unable to complete the mark. Ball comes down, and we'll have another ball up just inside Kapunda's forward 50. Umpire Herman working overtime at the moment. About time he earned his pay. Whistle with a tap, comes out. Grieve, really starting to impress so far today, the young player. 
Graves. Graves been down at Central Districts in recent times and back probably playing his first season of true senior footy at the Panthers. Was a very impressive junior. Just a good hard nosed defender. Someone that I think is really happy to have in their lineup. Neither Ruckman able to get to that ball as they were both holding each other. Rigney wrapped up in a tackle, driven into the ground. Umpire Patterson now controlling the play. Third man up for Kapunda knocks the ball forward. Strong tackle wraps up a player. We'll have yet another ball up. Angus Adams doing the ruck work for Angus and now up against Whistler who jumps and gets his hand to the footy. Free kick paid to Anguston. A little bit of holding. It was a throw. Threw it out. Threw the ball out. Your eyes may be slightly better than mine. I'm not sure it was a throw, but Aye. Anguston happy to take it. Summerton drives the ball forward now. Strong mark. Really good mark taken there. Jay Shannon playing coach. Just standing strong under the footy. New guys were coming behind him. That's an experienced player taking a courageous mark. He knows the pressure's on now. He knows he needs early goals, kicking to the uphill end of the ground. I think I'm going to pencil this one in already, Mike. Don't curse him. And you have. Commentator's curse. Bit of a dodgy kick as well, let's be honest. Yeah, it could have been better and definitely something that Angus would really need at this stage of the game. So they'll look to lock the ball in here. Kapanda with a clearing kick. Sean Bell to Sean that Bell, mark. really good little player. He looks to drive it down the line. Brad Valentine, the flyer, takes a big, strong mark. He was the biggest player in the contest. Turns around quickly, drives it forward, looking for San Andrea. He's well worn. Phoebe are doing a good job on him so far. Tom Ryan with a strong tackle there at the bottom of the pack. But Jacob Fiebiger, a good Canton boy. Big recruiting area for Anguson for many years. They've picked up a lot of good players from that region. A lot of good players, Mike. A lot of good players. Some didn't have the careers they deserved, but still. Jake Hood now running through the contest. Good handball back. That to Murphy now. Carnelli. Carnelli raked high with a... Almost a coat hanger from Joey Brown after he'd gotten rid of the ball, and Angus and players really going to let Joey Brown know about that for the rest of the day. He always seems to draw the attention of the opposition. He's quite an in in instigator. He loves a bit of niggle, Joey. As first quarter comes to a close, with the score here at, Angus at Dutton Park, Angus and two goal, four, 16, leading Kapunda two points on the Birds Barossa scoreboard, Glenn. Yes, it is, Mike. The good thing is that by the end of the quarter, starting to move a bit freer from both sides. Yes, ball getting, they've felt each other out. There's been a lot of heavy physical stuff early, a lot of tight contests and just piling on. But now the players are really starting to assert themselves and get the ball out of the open. Probably thinking a bit more about the game rather than panicking, they've, they've eased into the game. I'd like to ease them in a bit more than they have though, but uh, there's been some good passages, but it's still a bit of an, a bit of an ugly game at the moment. Ugly game, but Angus would be really happy with where they are at this stage. Kapanda, always really strong at home. They're always two or three goals better at home. It's one of the rare home ground advantages that you see. A lot of teams, their home ground isn't a fortress. Dutton Park truly is a fortress for the Bombers. And Angus needed to be in front at quarter time to be in this contest. Better players for the Panthers. I thought Ned Grieve was fantastic across half back. Uh, Ryan Humphreys Carnelli out on his wing kicked the goal and was starting to get involved. I thought Jake Hood was really good. Uh, Jacob Fiebiger did a good, really good job on Justin San Andrea when the ball came in. Up forward, a couple of players starting to put their hand up. Summerton getting his hands on the footy. Jay Shannon starting to get his hands on the ball as well, getting to good areas. And for Kapunda, I thought Brad Valentine was really starting to yeah. present giving a big option for them to kick two. How much height has he got over the others? Uh, Brad Valentine is at least six foot four, six foot five. Aaron Whistler's the big one oh, okay. for the Bombers. He's their leading ruck. It's his first game back for about six weeks from broken ribs. 
and he is dominating the ruck, but as such, not getting any clear football to his midfield. Angerson are really playing that well, not allowing him to get the ball into the hands of the dangerous Rigney and co. Kapunda, Jason McKenzie would be stressing to his players that they need to start taking the smart option when they bring the ball out of defence. A couple of times they had real opportunities to break. On the opposite wing there, you mean? Yes, and just poor option. Saw the ball chopped off and stale, mate, once again. Kapunda played this ground well. They're not a seriously offensive team. They don't kick a ton of goals, so they've got to be really smart about how they go about it. For Anguston, they want to keep locking things down and playing it on their terms. They want they want the tight inside stuff. Well, we'll see how they go with the Kapunda going down the hill, which you, according to you is the goal end, is it? Uh, hasn't seemed so. Actually, Kapunda will be going up the hill this quarter, Glenn. And sometimes up the hill is a better way to go. Depends on the team and how they're set up. Some teams love kicking downhill. Very difficult to kick at. When you're kicking at goal, the depth perception is really hard to find because there's no real structure behind the goals. I wouldn't know much about kicking at goals, Michael. I was always a halfback flanker, so... That's probably a stretch calling yourself that. Well, Ruck Rover as, as well. As we but. see the players taking the field, we'll leave your career where it belongs in ancient history. Sadly, VHS hadn't been invented back when I was playing, otherwise you'd see some stunning highlights, Michael. Let's just leave that there. We don't want to embarrass you publicly. Again. Umpire Herman moving in now. Throws the ball up. Turrell in the ruck for Kapunda. Gets the tap out. Angerson able to shut down that option straight away. Powerful tackle from Jay Shannon. Loves the physical work. Wins a free kick for holding the ball. Finds Dylan Tuckwell, who's met late. And not surprisingly, a 15-metre penalty. Sorry, a 25-metre penalty paid for that late hit. Borg. Brody Borg it was. Brody Borg just came in a little bit late, a little bit over-enthusiastic. Just wanted to let him know he was there. Don't want to take an easy mark. Old-fashioned ear massage, you'd probably call it. Danny Frawley would be smiling down on that. Tuckwell kicks, kicks just offline. Faded away at the end, didn't it? Yeah, just beyond his range once again. So another point for the Panthers early in the second quarter. Jai McKenzie bringing the ball back in for the Bomber. Down the outer side, the defensive side. Oh. Angerson had a chance to move the ball back, but it was well smothered. Antony couldn't get his hands on the ball in the middle of the ground, but a strong tackle there. Henry Ratcliffe, he's a little pit bull. Ball going forward and... Good mark taken by Jack Miles, who's drifted forward. Rare forward, 4A for the Angerson captain. Usually spends his day across half back. He's the general back there. But now you've said this is beyond his range for others. Uh, is this going to be in his range? No, mark? for Jack Miles, distance shouldn't be a problem from where he took this mark. He's going to be kicking from just over 40 metres out. Maybe right on the 40. Should be Range shouldn't be an issue. Accuracy... Not an issue. Oh, it actually is just off to the side. Goal umpire was probably in a deceptive spot before that. But so minor score. Angerston can't afford to keep blazing away. Kapunda moved the ball back in. It's a very high ball. Goes out on the full. Not sure he kicked it. Nearly landed in the netball court region of the ground. Roberts, I think, is bringing it back in, isn't he? Yes. Alex Roberts, new recruit to the Panthers this year, former basketballer, massive addition in terms of height, something they desperately needed. 
Moves the ball forward and finds Stephen Summerton on the lead. Summerton wheels around, heads towards the goal square. Blinkheim, the big target there, unable to mark. Kapunda, handball back. But ball just dribbles out of place. So there'll be a boundary throw in, in Angerson's forward pocket. I need to capitalise on this, don't they, Mike? They've Absolutely. They've a bit today. They can't afford to spend this much energy and not get a return for it. Blinkine pushed out of the ruck contest. Ball just goes over the back. Kapunda, I think Rigney it was, just hacked the ball out of the air deep. Callum Brown now took his time to survey his options and got smothered when he did try and kick it. Carnelli now picks the ball up. Heads into the middle of the ground. Strong mark taken by Radcliffe. Under pressure, he gets a quick handball back to Carnelli, who kept running. Ball bounces out in front of Blinkine, who was going for it. He's picked the ball up now against several bombers. Miles now with a quick kick forward. Carnelli. So undisciplined there from Angerston. Hennessy's handed off to Joey Brown, I think. Brown with a low penetrating kick. Taken by his brother Callum at centre forward who handballs off. To Sean Bell and now Mudge has got it. Is he going to kick from there? Mudge nope. chipped in. Finds a player. Looks like Brown again. Brown again. Callum, Brown. Callum Brown. He has got this distance in him. Normally a defender but has been forwarded quite a bit this year. And he'll have a chance to really take the momentum for the Bombers. This will really hurt Angerston, who have had most of the play in their forward line. But with only two points to show for it, if Brown well, kicks got, this... I think there's been a free kick paid somewhere, has there? He's just given the ball off. Hmm. I think it must have been a free kick down the ground for some unruly behaviour from Angerston. Not sure what was happening there. But it looks like the ball's gone to his brother, Joey who's often involved in scuffles. And he kicks the goal for the Bomber. First run. So that's another goal for Ray White Craigmore, the premiership team in real estate in the northern suburbs. And, and on the Birds for Rossa scoreboard, that's Kapunda's first goal, taking them to one goal, two, eight, trailing Angerson two goals, six, 18. And not happy about that, Angerson. They're having a bit of a chat to some of the Kapunda players. So a little bit of argy-bargy across the half-back line. And maybe they need to cut that out and play football. Perhaps that's why the free kick was given. It would have been better if they kicked the goal at the other end. But that would have shut them up. So see umpire Herman back in the middle. Thinking he's got control of the game. Ball goes up. Roberts and Whistler both get their hands to it. But Whistler gets the better of it. Jaden Antoni. Calm under pressure. Drives the ball forward. Finding a teammate. A little up and under kick. Nothing kick yep. Really doesn't help. Strong mark Zach there. Graham. Zachary Gar Graham taking the mark in defence. He's got options now. Let's go back where it came from. Down the defensive side. Unable to mark there. Angerson players tackled heavily. He's been awarded a free kick. Possibly high, I believe. Kick forward, doesn't find anyone, goes out of bounds, so it'll be a Kapunda free kick for the last touch rule. Kapunda going long down the line. No one able to take the ball in that contest. Still a bit of pushing and shoving. Uh, free kick free. paid Kapunda's way. San Andrea with the kick deep into the forward line. And Strong that's a really good take. Brown again, I believe. I think... No. no Opitz, Liam Opitz. Liam Opitz, that was a very good mark. Zan Andrea getting all his ball down in the wing. Angus would be happy with that, but very disappointed to give up marks in the forward line. He goes back. 
and sprays that to the right. Made the goal umpire work very hard. Richie Micken wouldn't be happy with that. Really shouldn't have missed that. It's a beautiful weather right now. Sun's out, no wind, perfect day, and did a shank. Just waiting to get the ball back. Finally, we've got the ball back with the fullback kicking it out. Comes long down this side. Rare. And Brad Valentine with a strong mark for Kapanda. Really starting to impose himself across the middle of the ground. Ball bounces around. And hat kick out from Angerson. No one able to take the mark. I think he did. I think he, uh, Thunder Boy got there. I can't see who it is. Running back with the ball, Alan Mudge. Aiden Mudge. Aiden, sorry, Aiden. Yes, good young forward. Courage is never an issue with him. So he's going to be taking a shot from a fairly tight angle. Should be good enough to put it through, though. Not going to get the distance. Or the accuracy. Uh, out on the full. So... Commentators showing they know their stuff here. Again, I do apologise to everyone who I curse with my call. See the ball on the outer side. Angerson clearing down the line. Kapanda player collects that ball. And... Throw in. Throw, throw in throw on in. the outer side, almost almost at the wing. This ground bathed in sunshine now. No wind to speak of. Roberts with the tap there. Rig needs the one who wins it though. He kicks around the corner. Quick handball off goes oh, to Angerson and free kick paid to Angerson. That little kick. Finds a teammate. He kicks deep into the middle of the ground, Roberts finds Ro big Alex Roberts, who wisely for a Ruckman handballs, finds Carnelli in the middle of the ground. He chips around the corner, and a really good strong mark taken there. Jay Shannon, the playing coach, gets to his feet, now looking for a target inside 50. Oh, a lot of options, though. Stephen Summerton leaking out to the pocket. Handballed off from Shannon... Jake Hood with a kick. Probably not the cleanest option. Angerson player stands up in a tackle. Blink on now. Kicks around Over the corner. shoulder. No. And a minor score. Another minor for the Panthers who have been wasteful in front of goal. Not just in this game, but in the reserves. They kicked 20 points. Who won the reserves game, Angerson Mike? won the reserves. A lot, clo lot closer than it should have been. Hunter now looking to clear down this side. Opitz with the ball. Comes down the line. Brad Valentine with a big fly. Both teams happy just to hold that ball in and get a reset. Angus Adams up against Whistler who jumps all over the Angus and Ruckman. About 10 minutes too early. Steve Summerton with a strong tackle there. Wrapped up Riley Hennessy. And Whistler continuing his tactic of jumping really early. That ball forward from Jackson Murphy doesn't find anyone. Finds actually a Kapunda player in the end. He gets the handball away. Ball drifts out. Kapunda able to get a kick forward. Ooh, and a big a big push there way too early. Sloppy, sloppy defence there. Grieve, that's his first big mistake for the day. Mark taken in the forward line. No, a free kick, I think, Mike. Free Not kick sure being why. paid against Kapunda for a push. And some kicking down the line, looking for Murphy, and he takes a fantastic mark under pressure. Kick around the corner is low and penetrating. Took, the ground, took a good mark. Yes. 
and finds go back, he says. Go back. Jaden and Antony on the outer wing. Angus are now slowing things down a little bit. That long kick forward, looking for Blenkheim, gets his hand to the ball, unable to complete it. Comes to the ground, he picks it up and he's wrapped up immediately. So we'll have a ball up probably 60 metres out from Anguson's goal. Blenkheim with the tap. Using his brute strength. It's that deja vu feeling all over again. It Mike. is just another ball up. Umpire Herman's arms getting heavy. Tap for Anderson. Quick tap down. Murphy roves it. And a bit of a push there from Shannon in the goal square. But the Kapunda player able to take the mark. Kicks back to where it came from. Murphy flew for another one. Came down hard. Might have hurt himself. He looks very sore after that. Jay Shannon trying to take control of the ball, but knocks it out over the boundary line. So a boundary throw in probably 30 metres around from Angerson's point post. Where do you see Angerson needing to get on top here, Glenn? Uh, well, they could kick straighter. That would be a good start. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Yeah, well. But Angerson definitely need to find a mark inside their forward 50. Perhaps somewhere 30 metres out they need. Ball comes now to Raisler, who handballs off. Miles with a handball. Kapunda with a quick hat kick coming out. They find a teammate in Mudge. And ball hacked forward. Angus Adams now loping after the footy. Can't get to it. Zan Andrea drives the ball forward. It's wow, good defense. But Grieve with a mark. He kicks to the outer side. He finds a teammate. Hang on, he's been called for a push out, has he? It's a free kick for Kapunda right in front of goal. Very, very late call. Remonstrating, didn't agree with it. Obviously, the Angus player, that's a surprise. Defenders often, often get calls against them, don't they, Mike? They do, tough, but job. you've got to be smart. I mean, smart and footballers don't often go in the same sentence, but you can't defenders. cost your team a shot on goal when you've got the momentum. 15 metres out. This should be a guaranteed goal for Mudge. Except he's running the wrong way. He's hit the post. Now, Michael, when I was a boy, we used to get taught, you run straight where you want the ball to go. That seems to have gone out the window. Now, what is that? Because he was running almost to the point That there. no longer exists. Players' te kicking technique is appalling in modern football, unfortunately. Well, I must say he got the got what he deserved there because he wasn't running anywhere that near the centre. That was a sloppy attempt to spoil there from Jay Shannon and Kapunda with a free kick driving forward. Strong That's a mark. beautiful Good mark taken mark. there. Young Jake Fiebiger, strong mark taken in defence. Finds a teammate on the outer wing. Now they're looking for a target forward. Angus Adams presenting. He gets one hand to it. Probably should have got two to it. Kapunda now better at ground level than Angus at this stage of the game. Callum Brown now with the footy. He drives it into their forward line. And a very strong mark. The only player who flew for it, Justin Zanandrea. He's starting to get look dangerous in the second term. He'll be having his first shot on goal for the day. Probably the most dangerous forward from either team. Angus and need to keep him under wraps. He's going to be kicking from probably 30 metres from goal. Tight angle. Gets up and under it. Good. Oh, no. Uh, just, just off line. Just snuck out at the end. Not by much, though. He'd be really disappointed with himself on that. He's a beautiful kick of the football and normally doesn't miss. Phoebe looking to bring the ball out now. Coming to the near side. Every player except four in front of... Uh, and Jack Sunderland. Miles went for that. Got two hands to the footy, but spoiled. Uh, Stephen Summerton with the football now, looking for a target. Little short kick over the top, finds a player. Archie Haddon now with another real ch tiny chip kick, finds Jay Shannon. 
who does the same thing again, but it's cut off in defence. Brad Williams with a good double-handed punch. Yes. Willow, real determined veteran player, hard-nosed. I love the way he goes about it. He's one of my favourite footballers of the last 10 years. Just, oh. He's in and under. Big call there, Mike. He's a mongrel dog. I just, he is the epitome of what I like in footy. Ball now at the back. Smother. Really good smother. Ball kicked forward now. Angerson player under the ball. Juggles that but takes the mark. Grieve now finds Fiebiger. 40 metres out in front of his own goal. Little chip kick across. Finds Tom Ryan who's really good. Often quarterbacks. On. He's been called to play travel. on. No, he's all right. Handball's off. Fibia goes down the middle of the ground. Jay Shannon, well spoiled by Kapunda, but John Raisler, quick enough to get the ball forward. Quick handball off. Chance. Beautiful handball from Stephen Summit and sets up a shot on goal. goal. I reckon, oh, just hit the post. Just and Jaden Antoni has hit the back of the post. It's not easy to do. As we look at the replay now, yes, he's just hit the back of the padding behind the post. That's very difficult to do. Still, it was a good piece of play, and we haven't had too many It of was them. one of the best pieces of play. The handball from Stephen Summerton was next level. It was, that's why he's such a good player. Such clean hands. Uh, a lot of players under that. Beautiful take there. Kapunda. Harry Watke just showing he's a cut above today. Yep, bit of give and go there. Kicked and then got the and handball. And Zan Andrea now with the mark outside 50. Launches long towards the goal square. Is Mark taken uh, it or is it the, I think he's paid the mark. I think the mark has been paid. Looks like Joey Brown from here. Gonna be, he's going to be right on the boundary because he took that literally behind the yes. boundary post. Should be a very, very tight angle. But he should be able to kick around the corner. This shouldn't be any trouble for a player of his ability. I'll mark it down as a point then, shall I? Cursed him again. I'm not trying to curse him, but he is an elite footballer. Was a part of the Crows' original reserves team in the SANFL a couple of seasons ago. He didn't kick around the corner. He kicked straight kicked and straight, through. And that's what drop punts are, can do for you. That's what good footballers do. That's the goal for Kapunda. And so Joey's got both goals yes, for Kapunda. Yes, Joey, the only goal scorer for the Bombers. As Kapunda moved to 2 goal 5 17, trailing Angerson 2 goal 8 20 on the Birds Barossa scoreboard. As the game living up to what we expected, really tight, but a lot of very dark clouds moving in now, Glenn. I'm a bit concerned about what we're about to cop. Yes, it does look a bit grey, Mr. Mitchell. Yes, coming from the Adelaide direction, which is often where the rain comes from here. There's still a bit of chit chat going on up there. Umpires talking to players. Someone's yeah. disagreeing. Oh, they know each other. They'll be having a chat, getting along. And There's free been kick. a free kick free paid kick at the, paid the, the middle of the ground. ground. Adam Turrell to take the kick. Well, that's, I think that's probably the third one Angerson's given away. Yes, and he handballs off. Probably smart, knowing the way Adam kicks these days. That ball goes long and forward, but Angerson player, the only one standing in the way. Alex Roberts took and the mark. And there's a free kick paid the other way now. And it'll be a 25-metre penalty. For a late punch across the gut it looked like didn't yes. it yes well they're probably trying to spoil the ball but that's as high as they can get on Roberts <laughs> there's a good strong mark I can't see is that Fibiger took that I can't tell ball Running. comes over to I think that's a goal a, yes a beautiful just, goal just outside the 50 I think he was or on the 50 that is an excellent kick there Archie Haddon with a running goal that's Excellent play from the youngster in his a first year in A grade footy. Very famous uh, football playing name, isn't yes, it? Yes, part of a famous clan at Angerston. His father, Craig, one of Angerston's all time greats. His un uncle, Lewis, a league footballer at Central Districts for a number of years. And in the tradition of uh, kicking a goal, he's immediately dragged, sent to the bench. So I don't get that myself. No, well, he's, <laughs> he's all excited. We don't even get too excited out there and maybe kick another one. Put him on the bench and let him calm down a bit. So that takes Angerson's lead to three goal, 8-26 to Kapunda's 2-5-17 on the Birds Barossa scoreboard. 
And, of course, that goal was brought to you by Ray White, Craig Moore, the, profesh- the premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. So another free in the centre, I think, possibly for kicking in danger. Absolutely ridiculous, some of the undisciplined stuff going on in the middle as Kapunda clearing the ball forward now. Good kick from Berg. Borg and Borg. spoiled easily over the boundary line by Angerston. Oh, I think there might be another free here. Free kick going Kapunda's way. Angerson in defence giving away a lot of free kicks so far. Coming in now, San Andrea thinking he's going to be a chance. He's given it a real chance. But another point. And just offline, so it's another point for the Bombers. San Andrea probably should have looked for another option there. From the boundary, it was always going to be a tough ask. As Angerson looked to bring the ball back in. Once they find it. The ball first, yep. <laughs> so you get looking to go down the outer side. Got Blinkhine as a target. Blinkhine takes a good mark Long in front of his down. eyes. Handball's off to Jaden Antoni. He finds John Razor, who on the bounce takes of, the ball. Bit of speed to this. this oh, oh, dear. Poor handball cut off there. And now Kapunda was a, turn it around. was a beautiful quick. run of play going Angerson's way. And good defence, you've got to say, then, to cut it off. Yes. And uh, poor fly there from the Kapunda player. Didn't make contact with the ball. Jay Shannon able to oh. clean it up. So Miller has socketed off the ground. That should be a free kick to Angerson. That should be last touch. Yep. Angerson will get the ball here. Grieve is about to have the kick. He'll look for Tom Ryan short down the line. Tom Ryan, one of the veterans in this Angerson team, calms things down a little bit. He often quarterbacks from halfback. A lot of the decisions are made through him. Blinkon went for the ball, was well spoiled. Sorry, quarterbacks from halfback. That's one of your best ones, I'd say, Mike. John Razor now, ball takes a mark outside 50, turns, kicks, probably a poor kick. Bit of a shank, yep. Stephen Summerton picks the ball up beautifully off the ground. Centres it. Centres it back to Razor, who's well spoiled. Ball in dispute now. Under under pressure, trying to get it out. Angerston holding it in. Kapunda by hands, just didn't panic. Oh, it's a the good ball grab. Out. Is that, he's marked That's that. a beautiful mark. Ben Antoni, he brings the ball inboards to Carnelli, who takes a quite lunging a good, mark. Quite a good mark in the end. I thought he was going to go over his head to start. Carnelli with a low penetrating oh. kick, looking for Angus Adams, but cut off. Really poor vision by some of these players today. Uh, Angus Adams got the ball, had to get rid of it straight away. Almost threw that one. And Tom Ryan took the ball and the opponent at the same time. And a bit of sit on each other. And oh, he's called for holding the ball. Wow. I think that's a bit stiff. but Interesting because the Kapunda player had the ball when, he, when yes, Tom Ryan when tackled down. him. Yep. I'm not really sure what happened there. I'll have a chat to umpire Herman after the game and ask him. Handball there from Whistler under pressure. Heads to the boundary line. And I believe it will be a boundary throw-in, although it was handballed over the line by Kapunda. I think he was taken over as he was handballing, Mike, let's be fair. Ball in. Whistler versus Roberts. Third man up, punches the ball. I miss third man up in AFL. Yes, I think it's something that we definitely could bring back. I think it adds a nice little dynamic that a little bloke like uh, Borg can get up there and add a bit of colour. And Borg is the kind of player who's ideal for that. He's not tiny, but he's got a good jump. Carnelli takes the ball, is wrapped up immediately. Players just grab the ball just inside the boundary line. And we'll have a ball up almost on the boundary line, just in front of the coach's box for Kabunda. Uh, we are into time on in the second quarter. Well, not time on, but we're almost 27 minutes played in the second, so the siren could go at any moment. Angerson had the ball now. Ryan, he's looking to drive the ball long. There's a few people open, Mike. Jackson Murphy. Radcliffe's got that one now. Radcliffe running. Down to Summerton again. I think I'm going to have a good time. going deep. Uh, Goes over the back. Kapunda able to clear. Oh. Ball Not cut off by Summerton. 
And that, there goes the siren to end the first half of play here at Kapunda. Anguston, three goal, eight, 26, leading Kapunda, two goal, six, 18 on the Birds Barossa scoreboard. Scrappy half of football here. Not a lot of pretty football played, but we've seen a couple of great marks, the likes of Murphy and Valentine. And a lot of undisciplined played, free kicks given away, several 25 metre penalties paid, probably more than the normal. Yep. More and than I've seen in the last few weeks, anyway. Both teams will be looking to clear that up. Their coaches will be hard on them at half time. I think that deservedly so. They will be stressing that they need to calm down and play their own style of game. Both teams want to play on their own terms and they need to find a way to actually string some play together. Angerson almost did a couple of times, but just let down probably at the third chain. Yep, just up in the forwards there. I think that's where they're falling down. You asked me before what they need to improve. They're working nicely out of half back and down the wing, but they just can't find any avenues, clean avenues into the forward zone. So, Yes, they may need to look at doing something structurally down there to get some runners in their forward 50. There's a lot of, lot of standing around and play, kicking to a player who's Surrounded marked. Surrounded by a couple of Kapunda players. Yep. Perhaps the likes of Ratcliffe, small running players, are an option deep forward. Jaden Antoni's a player who can take a mark overhead. He could be a good option. I agree there, Mike. But I think one of the key things is Angus and the Soto. I don't know what the free kick count is, but I reckon they've given away more from stupid frees. Than Absolutely, I today. couldn't agree so more. They would probably have given away four or five shots on goal from in ill-disciplined free kicks. Yep. And plus that one that was a goal and taken from the centre because something happened after the goal was kicked. Now, that's you can't really... Can't that's really right. Contain any of that, can you? It's it's hurting them badly, and it's something that they are going to have to address at halftime if they want to remain in the game. They're leading at the moment, but is that fool's gold? Don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And we'll be back after halftime with the second half of the game. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man, thanks. 
if you're still with us at Dutton Park here, uh, the weather has taken a turn at half time and we've had a heavy downpour. It's eased off now, but the second half is going to be a slippery affair. Ball up, but we see a free kick paid immediately going the way of Kapunda. Mark taken, they'll drive the ball into their forward 50. Brad Valentine got away from his opponent there. Just smart enough to get that push on his opponent at the right time, who slipped over. So Valentine will be taking a shot on goal. The Kapunda veteran, been around forever. As we have some scores from around the ground on the Birds Ross scoreboard. Half time, Tananda, three goal, four, 22. Greatest Trailing goal. South Gawler, six goal, three, 39. So first goal of the second half goes to Kapunda via Valentine. That's another goal brought to you by Ray White Craig Moore, the premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. So as we were discussing off air, Mike, uh, all those mists from Anguston could cost them quite yes. dearly. Missing goals in the dry conditions before this downpour really costly for the Panthers as now the margin is two points in the Panthers' favour. Anguston 3-8-26 leading Kapunda. 3 6 24 on the Birds Barossa scoreboard. It's very dark here at Kapanda, could almost do with the lights on. See umpire coming in now, ball up. Robertson Whistler, Whistler gets the advantage. Ball just hacked off the deck, doesn't go anywhere. Now Jack Miles with a clearing kick. Goes forward, Blinkon overruns it. Kapanda trying to handball out of trouble into space. Hack off the ground. Jaden Antoni beat the ball. Kapunda player just soccers it forward. Happy to try and find territory. Ball goes out of bounds. See Angerson now due to the last touch rule with the kick in. No one able to take that ball. Falls out the back. Oh. Under. Unable to get any clear touch on that. So smothered through for a point. I think you're right. We'd be handy to turn some lights on now. It's pretty dark out there. And it's very hard for us in the commentary position to see exactly what we we're calling at times, so please forgive us. As Rigney pushes that ball forward, gets on the end of the handball, gets the ball to Malera. He went to deck, but was good enough to get up with the ball. Centred it. Centres the ball. And Summerton just overran the footy. That handball back finds, actually Murphy it was. Murphy now with the left foot, kicks forward. Look for Dylan Tuckwell, who's wrestling with his opponent. Brody Borg, that little underground kick, just too clever for his opponent. And here we go, second touch for Sam. Uh, Sam racking up touches, one of the best players today so far in terms of possession. That was a clean touch. Whistle with a good tap. Oh, going to be Borg, holding the ball. Who's taken, be. holding the ball. Jack Miles with a good good tackle there. He's tried to do a bit too much. The initial hit dislodged the ball and he was forced to try and regather that mark there for Jackson Murphy. New recruit to the Panthers this year. Finds a player in the middle of the ground. Miles clears towards this wing. He's got Shannon on his own. Shannon with a quick kick forward. So it finds Tuckwell. Tuckwell drives the ball deep into the forward line. Kapunda cleaning up. That ball runs over the boundary line. Should be a free kick to Anderson on last touch. Under the scraggly clean kick. Oh, 
Ben Antonio with the handball. High up and under kick. Another throw in. Should be another throw in. We're going to, with the downpour we had ball really slippery now. Little patches of mud starting to appear on the ground. It's going to be a sloppy second half. We we're hoping it was going to get better. Blink iron at the front of that contest, able to nullify Whistler. Using his strength, pig farmer strength. Under with the free kick now, bring the ball back in. <laughs> Quick mark taken there. Malera. Tyrone Malera. Malera. Oh, uh, Brad Valentine, line. that Great is mark. a beautiful mark from the old fella. I wouldn't expect that in wet yes, conditions. A, I've seen him get off the ground twice this year. I'm still in shock. Quick kick over the outstretched arms of Roberts. Kapunda Has drilling the ball forward. Justin Zen Andrea chasing the ball. Angus and able to just hack the ball forward into space. Pick up Ben Antoni. Driving that ball down the wing. Someone un unable to gather under pressure. Kapunda being urged to kick long. And a beautiful pick up there. And the rain's coming back. Ben Antoni clearing the ball again. Ball into the middle in dispute. Kapunda player slipped over. Good enough to get up and get it again. Handball forwards. Picked up off the deck. Quick kick around the corner. As we see Grave now with a clearing kick. Get some distance on it. No one able to collect it as the rain starts hammering down again here at Kapunda. Farmers will be loving this. If only they could love it after the game. Rugby style kicking now, just end to end. And this with a quick clearing kick forward. The ball bounces over the boundary line. Another boundary throw in on the half forward line for Anguston. Neither team really looking to get the ball in the open at the moment. They're just happy to nullify them. A little bit of trench warfare, as they well, happen to say. Lights have finally come on. I was just about to ask you what the policy is with lights, uh, Mike, but they've just turned them on. It's up to the individual clubs, and Tom Leslie, president of Kapunda, thank you. It's immediately much better. Yes. It looks better on the screen, too. Definitely. Sam would be a happy man. And we get nothing from Sam. He's had two touches today. He thinks he's above us. It's not often I find you out loud funny, Mike, but it's that was one of them. <laughs> air of arrogance from the AV guy at the moment is just... He almost thinks like he's a guitarist. He's a professional. That's what he is. He's a professional, Mike. Uh, tackle there. Lucky not to give away a free kick for in the back. Sitting on him, yep. Uh, umpire sort of understanding... Umpire Patterson, really good call there. Understanding where the footy. These things happen. Whistler gets his hand to the footy, tap back. That kick forward almost lands on Jaden Antoni's chest. A hammering tackle there from Ratcliffe. As we see Borg get up now with the footy. No, he thought it was going to no. be his, but it's a ball so up. Umpire was quite happy. Patterson really letting the play go, and I like that. Hang on, he's just called something there. Tap forward, Antoni gathered the ball. He was about to clear, but... Free kick has been paid. Just as Mike says, they're letting it go. There's a free kick paid. I apologise to everyone. It's just like goal kickers. I mentioned the rain to Sam earlier. I believe that's why it's raining now. We see a triple spoil there. Clear and kick out. Doesn't find anyone. Apart from five Kapunda players right in the middle of all of them. As Rigney just 
sends the ball back forward. Good defensive mark. Good strong mark taking the defence there by Cal Loki. Been a bit quiet today. He needs to come into the game. He's got a strong body. Should be able to play over the footy in these conditions. He kicks down to the wing. Blinkheim caught right. under the ball. Just nudged Jai under. Jai McKenzie took a good mark Jai in McKenzie, the wet. That's a very smart play for a young fella. No one able to take that ball. Comes to the ground. Clearing kick. Blink on in front of it. Front Unable to hang it. on to it. A quick handball out by Miles was too good for Loki. For Haddon, sorry. I think Haddon kicked it before he marked, caught it there, buddy. Yes, he's still thinking about that goal before was he a good did goal, ask but us if we got it on film. Man. That should be holding the ball on hood. The ball. No. But Haddon quietly asked us if we got his goal on camera. Pretty happy with it. Oh, well, it's the uh, millennial generation, mate. They uh, all they care about is their he Instagram. Wants it on the gram later. Ball in dispute. Quick handball out. Haddon gets the ball back. Coming towards this could be our third to touch for the game. And Sam's disappointed now. He thought that ball was all his. He had his hands up, ready to mark, and it didn't come near him. He's shown more movement and excitement today than I've seen in the last two seasons. He's changed. He won't even talk to us now. Kick around the corner. Looked like it was going to bounce through, but chopped off. Angus in the fighting hard to keep it in there. Oh, they're actually going to get it out now. Yes. Got a Summerton. chance to Summerton now. Drives the ball to the outer side. Mark taken by Antony. Now this is where Angus and need to actually find a target. They can't afford to just keep volleying the ball around in their defensive well, it's half. It's going to be hard to find a target when every player is in front of the uh, half-back line. Yes, but perhaps if they'd cut back, it, someone was smart enough to cut into the centre of the ground and change things up, take a risk. Perhaps we should consider coaching, Mike. Uh, I've coached a couple of teams in the last few years, and while it's fun, no. Much prefer not having the worries of organising players. As you see, players on their knees now. Carnelli got the handball out. I don't envy these players one little bit. Rain coming down now. They're waterlogged. It's, it's died off a little bit, but it's still raining. You can't quite see it on the screen, probably. It's dark out there. I'm sure that you can see on the in screen the background, now. Yep. In the background, what it's like. But the lights are showing it much nicer than it actually is. Angerson smashing that ball now coming out into it's a plenty race, of open foot space. Race. Foot race on. Kapunda players leading in the race. Aiden Mudge. Mudge goes to ground, but the ball seat goes over the line. He's kept it out of Angerson's hands. He did that for his teammates. Mudge, he's just one of those players who keeps going and going. He's a favourite amongst his teammates. They love the way he goes about it. As we see Alex Roberts coming off and Angus Adams coming back on. Angus and need to have Roberts back out there. They need that height in this weather just to bring the ball to ground. Summerton with a soccer off the ground. Soccer into space going the wrong way. But gives it in Jaden Antoni's advantage. Antoni picks it up, kicks around the corner. And the ball lands in a teammate's bread basket. I'd say hot potato, but it's probably not very hot out there at the moment. That was Malachi Colhagen. Good young player. Got the handball off, but then smothered a kick. Hasn't been sighted much today. He's a player who could pop up and kick a couple of goals in these conditions. Bring some speed and nous to the forward line. It's a natural goal kicker. Ball in in Angerson's forward pocket. Neither Ruckman able to impact that. Ball kicked off the ground Carnelli, around the corner. I think that was Carnelli, great kick Ryan around the Humphreys corner. Carnelli, that is a miracle goal out of nothing. Didn't even possess the footy. Just smart. Got his boot to it. And that is an important goal for the Panthers. And it's another goal brought to you by Ray White Craigmore, the premiership team in real estate in the northern suburbs. But Joey Cirillo, he'll sell your property anywhere you want. If you're looking to sell your house, give Joe a call. He's a lovely fella. He'll hook you up. As we see Jaden Antony coming to the bench now for the Panthers. Replaced by Jackson Murphy. Murphy's been important for Anderson today, as has Antony. So 
both players doing hard work and getting a well earned rest. Ball back in the middle now. Angus Adams in the ruck for Anguston. Up against Adam Turrell for Kapunda. See what Adam's plan is against the tactical ruckman. Turrell holds space, gets his hand to the footy. Gets his foot to it, hacks it forward. Brown bundled to the ground as he kicked it. Dan Antony hacks the ball into space. Stephen Summerton, little chip kick forward. Marking contest, no one able to take it. See the ball spill out the back. Socket forwards, stayed inside. Still in play. I think everyone's a little surprised. Oh. See the ball go to the goal line touched. and touched. Real opportunity out of nothing there for Anguston. This is the ball coming now. Kapunda player bundled over as he kicked it. A clear mark taken. He kicks down the line. Finds space. Zan Andrea couldn't get to it. Some hard tackling here. Players getting in low, coming in head first. It looks like rugby union at times in these conditions. Umpire Patterson to ball it up. Adams negates Turrell, but Turrell able to take the ball, kicks it over his shoulder. Ball upends everyone. Had a bit of a warning spin on that one. Hand ball out the back. Murphy back to Grieve. Grieve with a clearing kick. No one able to take the ball, but a beautiful handball from Tuckwell. Angus Adams, the big ruckman, hacks the ball forward. Ball comes off hands. Yeah, should be a boundary throw in. Yeah, another example of why ruckman should handball rather than kick. Sometimes they don't have a choice, and true. you do what you got to do occasionally. So we see a boundary throw in now, just inside Angerson's, or right on Angerson's forward 50. Blinkine doing the ruck work, not able to get his hands to the footy. A lot of sloppy play going on here. Understandable in the conditions. Tom Ryan with a massive tackle on his Kapunda opponent, but a free kick Give paid. Him a free away in the back, I reckon. Probably had him before the ball got there okay. as well. Yep. But that's okay. They're not ha unhappy giving away a free kick there because it gives their defenders a chance to get back. Angus Adams read that ball better than anyone. He was the only one who knew where it was going. He's taken the mark. But is he going to kick this or handball off? He's going to kick. Not a prettiest looking kick, but it's effective. No one able to mark. Kapunda now bring the ball back around the corner. Murphy flies and spoils. Adams fumbled the ball. Loki fumbled handball. Ends up with Kapunda. Overran. Quick kick out. Is it going to go out? Is it staying in? Ball at the boundary and tackled over the boundary line. As we see Jake Hood getting some treatment to his calves in front of us. And as you can see, there's water on the ground as they're running around out that side of the wing. It's pretty splashy out there. Yes. This side does collect the water a little more than the outer due to the slope of the ground. It's a unique ground. Runs probably the opposite way to what you think it would. In fact, it's the opposite way of what it was 100 years ago. As we see, heavy tackle. Two Angerson players on top of the Kapunda player with the ball. Just... Joey Brown barking instructions to his players. Never shy of having a word, Joey's. Really strong, spirited player. Ball comes out. It's not really deliberate. It was called cool from Angus and players were deliberate there. It was just off the side it, of the fist. It's one of the most pathetic calls in football from crowds and players. It really is a terrible rule that I think needs to be consigned to history. Good ball in. Neither ruck both ruck and rust wrestling. That punch goes in Kapunda's favour. Brown was looking to pick it up, but John Raisler attacked the footy. Raisler still following it up. Ari Regner strong enough to bump him off the contest. Uh, Borg taking in a strong tackle. Jack Miles wraps him up. Wrist, 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 wrist. 
Whistler with a clear fist, but fisted again by Summerton. Ball comes down. Rigney grabbed the ball, dropped it as he was tackled. Up and under, Jack Miles going back with the flight. Kapunda player stayed under the ball with courage. Good eyes from both. Good team. Good stuff from both players. That's very there. courageous. As we Hennessy, see, Riley Hennessy, Hennessy, who was under that contest, comes out sore, but his teammates will be so proud of him for that. He's just earned a lot of respect. Ball comes down. As we see, Murphy now, strong left foot kick, finds plenty of territory. Ball's punched over the boundary line. Jacob Heintze with a good fist there. Real stalemate at the moment. Yeah, what is it? One goal each this quarter, Mike. Correct. Very low scoring game. As currently on the Birds Barossa scoreboard, Angerson 4 goal 10 34, leading Kapunda 3 goal 6 24. And on the Ray White Craig Moore time clock, we are 21 minutes into the third quarter here at Kapunda. Just getting a throw in again. It's probably a little bit flat, that one. That's why the umpire, field umpires called it for again. Boundary umpires have been doing a very good job today in the conditions. It's not easy to do this. That's a much That's a better, better throw one. in. The junior coaches will be very pleased with that. Quick hack out of the pack there from Steve Summerton. Into the forward line. And some players bundled off the contest. Bit of push off. He's going to get called if he does that too often. And he Tried did. Tried to fend off. Yep. Tried to do called it twice. Holding the ball. First one was all right. Second one was one too many. Yes. Poor Malachi Colhagen there. You can get away with that in juniors. Not in A grade. Much to go to down the ground. Just no. be another bomb, I reckon. Kapunda, they've got a target in mind. Doesn't come off for them. Rigney fighting for the ball at ground level. Got Jack Miles and another Panther on top of him. Humphreys Carnelli, it is. Won't be much time on in this quarter, Mike. What do you reckon? No, it shouldn't be a lot. Uh, we're now over 22 minutes into the third quarter on the Ray White Craigmore time clock. Oh, deliberate. And deliberate out of bounds paid. So free kick going Angerson's way. This kick going quick. laterally, not deep into the forward line. Probably quite a shallow entry. Uh, John Razor okay. there off the deck. Moves the ball forward. Couldn't pick it up cleanly. Understandable in the wet. So see a ball up inside Angerson's forward 50. Almost directly in front of their goal. Not too much time left in the quarter, I guess. No, so. it could be a chance for a last gasp effort. Lincoln gets his hand to that. Brings it back in. Probably a stalemate again. Up by Herman will read ball up. Here comes in now. Blinkhine and Whistler wrestling. No one able to collect this footy. Same thing, about 20 yards further down the Probably road. Probably rugby scrum style. The ball's on the ground and you see about 20 sets of legs around it. Whistler, Whistler jumped early. way early too early. Yep. Probably jumped almost a quarter early. <laughs> That's probably for a ball up in the fourth quarter. You're, you're warming up, I tell you. As the day gets cold. Not many people are warming up here. It's freezing conditions. Oh, a free kick against Whistler then, was it? Oh, Whistler... May have given away a free kick. Blink iron rubbing his head. Possibly that's why. Just to, to sell a bit of a Big fella, he's outside 50. Too far out to score, but he needs to put this ball to the top of the goal square. So Angerson like, like the can siren apply to go, some pressure. Put some pressure on. Put the siren on now. Angerson will want to crumb this when it hits the top of the goal square. Kapunda will just want to deaden it. Jump on the footy. Comes in now. Off the side of the boot a little bit. Uh, it's coming back. Coming back almost. Offline, minor score. So Kapunda now with the kick in. Looking to come long down this side, get some clear breathing space. Blinkhine goes for it. Ball comes through his hands. Got the kick away well, kick. yep. And ball comes back. Tom Ryan smothered as he kicked it. Ball spinning towards the boundary line and kicked. Out of bounds by the Kapunda player. Lane Curtis, I think it was, was it? Yes. I haven't heard much from him today. Uh, hasn't had a lot of the footy, which is unusual for him. 
We see another boundary throw in, and that should be the end of scoring for the third quarter as we are over 25 minutes into the third quarter on the Ray White Craigmore time clock. Players standing up in the tackle, getting absolutely smashed in the conditions. Really tough footy being played now. This is who you, when you're going to see which player's got the mental strength to be able to keep going in these conditions. Ball comes to the ground. No one able to get clear hands on it. Angerson trying to smash the ball out. Bergermeister tried to bunch Bergermeister's a good little player. Another Cainton sedan area young fella. There goes the siren. The siren goes to end play in the third quarter of the live stream game of the day. Currently on the birds were off the scoreboard. Angerston leading four goal 11 35 to Kapunda three goal 6 24. If you think, gee, that's low scoring, have a look at the conditions. Not a lot of rain during the quarter, but half time we had a massive downpour and it's been steady for the last 15 20 minutes. Players struggling to keep their feet at times, struggling to get two hands to the football and cleanly take the ball, Glenn. They're trying to take it up in the air still, some of them, and they should be letting it get to their chest a bit, grab it and wrap it up. Correct. That's a really good insight. I'm here for my insights. I'm shocked. <laughs> but just, well, yes, correct. Well, They're not playing... A lot of these players know how to play wet weather football. True. We're in drought conditions for so long, we forgot what wet weather footy is like. Perhaps so. also the fact that so many of the grounds have been improved by count, local councils in the last decade that we don't have the wet, boggy conditions that we used to have ah, The glory 20, days. You're, you're, talk, you're talking about my heyday again, aren't you? Yes, I am. Back when I thought but uh, Craig Haddon had a play even, football. Even this ground at Kapunda has had a lot of drainage work done to it in the last decade or so, so you see it hold the water beautifully. Even mid-winter in a really wet year, it's not turning to slush. Players have the luxury of playing on good surfaces, and it's a skill that we've probably lost from the game. It is. So... In order to win, who's going to have to do what for each team, Mike? In order to win, Angerston need to find a way to get clear ball into their forward line. And Kapunda, really the same sort of thing. Kapunda have been wasteful coming out of defence. They probably have the better marking targets across half back when they come out of defence. But they're not using them. They're messing around with the ball a bit too much. They've got players like Joey Brown, Ari Rigney and Tyrone, Tyrone Malera who can run and carry the footy. They're not using them. This, these wet conditions, you don't just want to be hacking the ball with no clue where it's going. Hacking to get, the packs, yeah. Get the handball off to a running, classy player like those three I just mentioned and let them use their skills. Let them run fifth, their full 15 and deliver the ball 35 to 40 metres with an accurate kick. So, 25 minutes left in the game. Here's your prediction. Uh, Angerson have the lead. I think that's a really important thing at this stage of the game. It's a narrow lead, but they seem to be generating more shots on goal than Kapunda. Kapunda in the second quarter got a lot of shots on goal from free kicks that were poor discipline by the Panthers. That's Without that, they haven't generated their own shots. That's a good point. They uh, obviously got a bit of a turp into at half time. They've come out a bit more focused than they were in yes. the second quarter. But Angerson have generated their own shots on goal and have generated a lot more. They've just been wasteful. So I'd say that Angerson have done enough to indicate to me that they can create enough shots on goal in the final quarter. They are going downhill, which will help. They do like kicking to that end. Second quarter, they had a lot of shots on goal down there. And as we're speaking, we've got score update from the Tanunda South Gawler game. South Gawler seven goal eight fifty, leading to number six goal five forty one on oh, the Birds Ross score. That's closer than I thought it was going to be too. That is closer than South Gawler thought it would be. <laughs> they were fairly confident going into this game, and South Gawler also winning the reserves and under seventeens in that contest. It's one of those games that's very tough to to want to find a winner though, isn't it? South Gawler and Tanunda. Nil old draw maybe. Yeah. No, I love them all. All right, so with one quarter to go, we have only a couple of goal scorers for each team. Joey Brown for Kapunda's got two, and Brad Valentine one. And for Angerson, Ryan, Ryan Carnelli's got two, Steve Summerton and Archie Haddon one each. So Of course, Archie Haddon, who will be watching his oh, that, goal that, on that, the replay. That'll be a highlights package for many years to come, I'm sure. I think that will feature very heavily on Instagram in the coming week. 
possibly even a TikTok of your call. As players taking their positions in the middle of the field, the rain has eased off for the moment. And Sam's just given me the you evil idiot. eye for mentioning yep. that again. Well, you're he's, at least he's talking to us now. Well, we'll After talk. his three touches, we thought we were dead to him. Talk, talking to us by our body language, he didn't actually speak to us then. There was only one finger being used. <laughs> Typical musician. As we see the ball up in the middle of the ground, Whistler with a clear punch forward. And Ben Antoni dives into that, he puts his up head there, over? and he gets a free kick. First to the ball, off in the way, isn't it, in this field yes. of condition? No, actually, he's given away a free oh, kick. Oh, well, there you go. First to the ball. Gives Maybe away. for kneeing his opponent in the shin. Ah. Interesting call. Punda a find a mark forward. This is... Something they haven't been able to do for Sean much of the Bell. day. Sean Bell hasn't seen a lot of the footy today. We were just talking about getting good entry into the forward lines and then they go and do it straight away. And it's kicking from probably outside his range. With a wet footy? I'd say so. Wet footy is going to be kicking from at least 42 metres out. It's got good distance on it, but at the... Fades at the end, doesn't it, to the left? Cost of the accuracy. So minor score for Kapanda to start the last quarter. But that'll give them some hope that they can build momentum. Angerston need to find a way to get the ball back on their terms. Big, long, clearing kick from Fiebiger. Not really to his team's advantage. Just goes over the boundary line for a throw-in. You see, not many players in Angerston's attacking half. Just the six players forward of centre three Angerson players and their three opponents from Kapunda. Oh. The ball comes to the wing now. A lot of wrestling going on. Umpire finally calls for a ball up. Free kick being paid Angerson's way. Punter player heading towards the bench. It doesn't look very well. I can't see who it is. Got his head down. He's just... I think he's copped onto the midsection or something. Angerson clearing the ball forward. You keep an eye on the player who's yep, in distress. I'll, I'll work keep out who an eye on the play. As we see a boundary it's Whistler, in. isn't it? No. No, definitely not no. Whistler. Boundary throw in on the outer side. Oh, he's got blood nose, I think is what it is. Yes. Top one in the tussle. Possibly in the schnoz. That's usually where you get your blood noses, Mike. After last weekend, I'm no stranger to them. Zach Graham. That's where I was confused. Zach I saw Graham. the nine and thought it was Whistler, but no. Zach Graham. See, Kapunda player wrapped up in a tackle by two Angus players there. A lot of determination out there. We'll see which team can crack first. Pi Patterson with the ball now. Throws it up. No Whistler one gets battling to hard. Neither Ruckman able to influence it. And the midfielders grab the ball. Tackle each other straight away. Do it all over again. See Borg being sm smashed in the tackle there by Jay Shannon. They go back to each other, acknowledge each other. A bit of respect there. Borg flying through for the ruck contest. He's taking the ground immediately. I'm resisting making a Star Trek reference here, Mike. <laughs> Big punch away there. Whistler. Big punch didn't really go anywhere. It's come back almost to where it was. Well, it went somewhere and then came bouncing back pretty quick because Malera couldn't grab hold of it. Malera really hasn't had an impact on the game. He's a player that Kapunda need to get his hand on the footy this quarter. Borg takes the ball, Out of kicks it around the quarter. Well spoiled there. Jacob Fiebiger. Handball backwards, I thought it was. But the umpires seen it as a throw. You see Mudge will now drive the ball forward for Kapunda. 
Plays on out wide, but I don't think it's gone to anyone. It's going to go out. Was the ball touched by anyone before it went out? I think it was. I think it's going to be a throw in. Boundary throw in probably 35, 40 metres around from Kapunda's goal. Whistler and Co. get their hand to the footy, but really doesn't go to anyone's advantage. Angerson smashing the ball along the ground now. Go aerial. But Kapunda able to clean up by hand. San Andrea around the corner. San Andrea's come a long way from goal, just trying to keep Kapunda in the game. Angerson with a clear and kick forward. Not able to take that. Being held, surely. Player no. going for the ball, being held, taking the ground. Little chip kick back. Finds Kapunda player. Opitz, Liam Opitz. Liam Opitz has been solid all day. He's actually kept Shannon out of it a fair bit. He's yes, he's been quite good. That's a Callum Brown with another good mark. He's been serviceable today. Very good in the first half, but it's drifted out of the game since. Goes for a short kick. Many finds choices. Player finds Rigney. Sorry, Malera, someone that we were saying needed to come into the game. He's taking the mark. Goes to Torp. I Ooh. like that. And spoil through. Rush through for a behind. JJ took that through, I think. Uh, ben Antonio. So we'll see Angerson bringing the ball back in. They're looking to go to the defensive side. Is a whistle gone for something? What's what's being called I'm here, Mike? Not sure. Does anyone know? Just I can't even see, see where the free is. The screen. Is it going back to it's going back to the full back position? I think. Mm, can't say I'm sure what that was oh, paid for. Dear. And Ben Antonio will bring the ball back in again. Probably head in the same direction. Yeah. Gets a bit more distance on this kick. A bit better kick, yeah. And Kapunda players were in good position under it, but spoiled. And soccer. Soccer off the ground there. Finds Malachi Kohagen with a handball across to Stephen Summerton. He kicks the ball to the advantage of his teammate, Blinkon, who was pushed in the back. Gets up, chasing his opponent, puts him under pressure. That kick... Not really directed. Another kick around the corner. No one able to take it cleanly, but Kapunda now. They're standing up. Ball smothered. Doing all right. They're really not willing to give an inch. You saw Opitz under that last aerial ball. A lot of courage being shown. Trouble is they're flooding the back lines a bit, and then there's no one through Correct. the centre to see the take ball it when they get it out. Falls it. Summerton's feet. He picks it up, kicks around the corner. Kapunda player's got the ball, being tackled. Happy just to keep it in, no attempt to get rid of it. Ball up, probably 30 metres in front of Angerson's goal. Took it out Aaron of Whistler took it out of the ruck and was tackled. Didn't get paid. Probably could have been called holding the ball. Would have been a brave decision at this point of the game in the wet. Probably not what we want to see in football. So clever umpiring. Runners getting in the way. As we see Ben Antoni puts his head over the footy, gets the handball out, affects the tackle. tackle. Good tackle. Antoni's go. coming to the ball in this, into the game in the second half. Quiet first half from the guy they call Bungie. He's come into it nicely, warmed into the game, so to speak. And Valentine's dropped out a little bit too, hasn't he? Valentine it? has definitely dropped out, but at his age, getting tired is an issue. <laughs> Do you make many enemies doing this, Mike? Oh, I've got enemies before I do this, don't worry. Rangy knows he's old. He admits it freely. As we see Angerson making an interesting change. Alex Roberts was going to come on to replace Matt Blinkheim, but now Jaden Antoni comes on and taking Roberts' place. So a running player that could get dangerous in the forward There's a mark taken. I can't see who's got it though yet. Strong mark. Really good play. Bombers just pressing hard here. I think this is Valentine, the old timer that we were the talking one that about. We're just, yes, we're just bagging off. I'm not bagging. I'm just <laughs> stating the fact that he is a senior citizen in football terms. So Shannon's having a little bit of a conversation out there as well. Yes, just 
Letting people opinions know. Opinions being given left and right. Free dis- a free discussion of ideas. That's what we want in a democracy, coach, isn't it? You've got to tell players what's, going, what's what. All right, is he going to get this, Mike? What do you reckon? This is a very gettable goal for a player of a lot of skill. It's going to make a good game if it is. It's gone straight through, it's I reckon. straight through. That's what he does. Brad Valentine with his first goal of the day. Another goal, goal for Ray White Craigmore. His second goal yep. for Ray White Craigmore. That takes the score on the Birds Rossa scoreboard to Kapunda. Four goal, 8-32, trailing Angerston. Four goal, 11-35. A three-point game. We're well into the fourth quarter. We're ten and a half minutes into the fourth quarter on the Ray White Craig Moore time clock. So plenty of time for both these teams to make their last ditch efforts. And at the risk of uh, sounding strange, those goal those uh, shots that Angerson missed earlier could In come back dry, and walk them. Definitely. That's their Achilles heel right now. Although, having said that, we now have sunshine again. So yes. four seasons in one day up here at Kapunda. Uh, probably seven seasons in a day at Kapunda. It's that stranger place. Okay. All right. So we see the umpire coming in. Umpire Patterson balling up. Coming off a long run. <laughs> so we see ball well tapped around by both Ruckman. Volleyball happening there. No one picking it up cleanly. Kapunda player it. dives on the footy. Oh, he's caught high. Uh, but he was high. taken high, so he gets a free kick. This could be a bit of a swing here, going Some against Angus. Driven forward, but going out wide. Driven wide rather than forward. Probably not the best entry. No. And he's been pinged for holding the ball. I can't see you here, the Angus and player holding his ground, head on the ground. Oh, yes. Not sure who that is. It's could be Ben Antoni. Oh. Big kick out of defence. Jack Miles with a juggling mark. That's powerful stuff from the captain. Well timed. Linkine under the footy. No, Malachi Macris it was. I think it was Jay Fibiger who caught that heavy one back behind, back at the other end of the ground, Mike. He's, he's tough. He's, up, to he's up and about again now. He's like his dad. Yep. <laughs> he, he can handle that. Handball in, t- in boards. Kapunda chopped it off. Bombers Good. player picks it up, but he's tackled immediately. Got the kick out, Kapunda. Almost to push in the back there. A bit lucky, I think, against Kapunda. Ball not to get off that. the deck, into space. Only Kapunda players in the area. Player didn't take possession. He was smart enough to know he was about to be tackled. Rigney got the handball. Handball away. back to Opitz. Opitz. Opitz with a good kick to center, center forward. Yep. That's very clever. There's a couple of players Callum running. Brown. He ignores them. He's now going wide, which they've been doing all day out to that flank. Aiden Mudge with the footy. He loads up, goes forward. And good defensive mark. Good defensive there. mark. Jacob from Fieber the man we just talked about. From yep. the knock he took a moment ago. I think it just makes him tougher, to be honest. A bit like his dad. Uh, get, exactly. I was thinking the same thing. Billy always got a bit better after he'd been smashed a couple times. Public convenience is made of brick, one thinks of. Absolutely. Well said. That's how they're built. Dairy farmers, they're all built tough. So another bit of a scruff out there on the wing. Yes. Angerson player picks the ball up out of the contest. He's tackled. Uh, hat kick goes higher than it goes for distance wise John Razor affects a tackle team tackle there yeah. Oh, strong two. tackle but dangerous tackle according to umpire Little Patterson so Opitz again we mentioned before that he hasn't uh, been in the game tripped as he went back he lost a bit of footing lost a bit as he kicked it as well but still gets plenty of distance Jake Hood now with the footy gets that handball off and Does under pressure off, oh uh, he shanked that kick of off the, the side of his boot that's a terrible, terrible option. It's hard to stick a tackle here. They're running fast. Yes. Uh, Phoebe with a punch. Goes straight to a Kapunda player. Another kick. It's high. But a very, very courageous mark taken there. A slightly fortuitous kick, that one, I think. Wasn't where he wanted it to go, no. but I a think chance he for a Kapunda goal. Sort of hit the middle of the ball instead of the end of it. 
got it. Can't quite see on the replay. But looks like... Callum Brown, is it? Yes, Callum Brown with another mark. He's taken a lot of courageous marks under the high footy today. He specialises in that. Leans back on the kick, puts it through. That is a huge goal for the Bombers. And Potentially the first time today. I think Kapunda's in front. Kapunda is in front for the first time for the day. And another goal for Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team in real estate in the northern suburbs. And on the Ray White Craigmore time clock, we are nearly 16 minutes into the final quarter. Angus are under real pressure. As Kapunda go to five goal eight thirty eight, leading Angerston four eleven thirty five on the Birds Barossa scoreboard, Glenn. Yes, well, it's been coming. Angerston has had a bit of a uh, slower start to this yes. last quarter. Kapunda, Kapunda for ten minutes had the ball forward of centre, and Angerston finally cracked. The Panthers need to find a way to hit back now. They need to find some space and get the ball forward of centre. Roberts unable to get to the ball. Turrell just held the space under it. Oh. Kapunda with another hat kick forward. Feel no like one able to mark. And high tackle. Uh, Kapunda player had his head over the ball. Angus and player with Callum, momentum Callum took him. Again. Callum, Callum Brown. Brown with another shot. He's Flying shot. Two and two, is he? No. Uh, the ball. Kapunda player tried to Jackie Chan that out of midair. But unfortunately just brought it to ground in front of him. Come on up. See the ball bouncing around. Attempted kick around the corner. is smothered off the boot by Fiebiger. I think it's gone out. I think it's a point. It'll be a throw in. That was a great smother from Fiebiger. I know it's out in the full, is it? No, sorry. My fault. It is no. a throw in. Kapunda pressing hard now. Really wanting to win this game. They want the points in front of their home crowd. This is when you dig deep. Angerson player spun around. So we'll have another ball up directly in front of Kapunda's goal. Probably 15 metres from the top of the goal square. So 25 metres from the goal line. Let's see another pack form. We'll have another ball up. Borg with a flying shot on goal. Spoiled and just trickles out across the boundary line. So we'll have another throw in just around from Kapunda's goal. Kapunda pressing hard. Angerson trying to keep the damn wall together with a bit of gaffer tape, it seems, at the moment. I don't think you're even using gaffer tape. I think you're using sticky at the moment, Mike. It's not strong enough for gaffer. <laughs> Maybe blue tack. Post it notes. See the ball come in and another stalemate. Umpire Herman will have to come in and ball it up where it is. Slowly getting closer to the goals. Not the way you'd want to do it though. Inch by inch, just like World War One. The ball move out, break out into space. Angerson with a handball. Kapunda player, he took it, slammed to the ground. That could also be a dangerous throw. No, it's a throw in, I think. Probably fortunate there. I felt that that could have been another dangerous tackle. Probably why they don't give me a whistle. Probably. That and they can't afford me. One of one of many reasons. Angerson clearing now. Jaden Antoni out in front. Spoiled well. Yeah. Really great work from Joey Brown. He's hit the ground hard, clutching a knee. Yes, there. he's come down quite hard, landed on his knee. Trainers go straight to him. So he'll be coming to the bench. If he can. Uh, Jackson Murphy will be coming on after a rest. Probably a, not a bad replacement. No, he's limping. No, he's going to tough it out. Thought he was playing soccer for a sec, I think. No, he's coming off. He's going to come off under his own steam. Yeah, holding the ball. He tried to do too much. Yes. Free kick, holding the ball. Shannon's just giving away. I was just about to say, Shannon's oh. arguing. And he's just that giving away a free kick. really poor from the playing coach. That's terrible discipline. Leading from the top there. That is unforgivable and Possibly. that could cost Angus a goal. The nail, as they say. As we see Harry Watke about to line up for his first shot on goal for the day. If 
like he's confused about where he's supposed to be kicking. He's pointing at the goals. He's worked it out now. He runs in. It's very quiet. And he's split them. Got it there. Kapunda now with a nine point advantage on the Grant Burge, sorry, Burge for the scoreboard. Six goal late, 44, leading Angus and 4, 11, 35. As the Ray White Craigmore time clock almost gets us to 21 minutes into the final quarter, that could be a match winning lead for the Bombers. Angus and need to find out. They haven't had the ball forward of centre for at least 10 minutes or more. Been a disappointing quarter from the Panthers. Angus and need to find a way. Jay Shannon owes his team a goal after that brain fade. So look for something to come here. Roberts wins the tap. Probably one of his first for the day. Ball not really coming out. That's no, locked in there. It's hacked forward. Kapunda seems to have a bit more energy all of a sudden, as yes. he would after coming Running from on top of the ground now. As opposed to underneath it. Great effort there. Never understood that expression, Mike. Running Zach on Graham. top of the ground. Where else are they going to run? Even with a heavy ground, you feel like you're on top of it. Nice. Running in dry conditions. Metaphorical. Sorry to go so deep for you. Oops. Brian McKenzie clutching a hammy there. Not a good time of game for that. Whistler with a double fist punch forward. Just trying to give his team some distance. Angus and player held without the footy. No. No. Let's a free gone the other way. When things are going for you, they go for you. I'm not sure what that was for. No. Definitely didn't see that one. Ball move forward now for Kapunda, long and deep. And a big mark taken there. That's huge in the context of the game. Plays on. Is he going to get caught? Ooh, not quite enough grip on him. Able to get the ball out. Another kick forward from Graham. Is that another mark? Yes, another mark taken. Kapunda really starting to surge now. Bomber blitz just starting. Our man Valentine, he's got two already. Chance for the third and become the highest goal scorer for the game. Should be no problem at all with this one. It's probably a better angle than his previous shot. Similar distance. Goes back. Umpire doesn't move. And a goal. splits the middle. Other time with yet another goal. Kapunda really taking this game by the throat in the last few minutes. And with nearly 23 and a half minutes gone on the Ray White Craigmore time clock, that could be all she wrote for the Panthers. Put up a brave fight, but Kapunda just surging in front of their home crowd late. Just a little bit too much muscle. It's a 10 minute burst, isn't it? That's what's turned the game. Yes, they like just kept the ball in their forward line and Angerson's defence just trying to hold together but couldn't quite plug the holes still doesn't help when your playing coach gives away a 25 meter the amount of shots on goal given away by Angerson from Oregon's ill discipline four. From at least four if four not goals five to have six come from that so it's been very disappointing from Angerson and something they do need to address Good clear tap out. for Kapunda Miles able to get on the end of it Spins around, kicks the ball forward, high up and under. Blinkine's the one under it, bounces off his chest, into space. Kapunda player tackle. juggled the ball and is tackled immediately. Brown taken down by Carnelli. Bangus didn't want any chance of this game. They've got to get a goal out a of this. A goal quickly from this. Ball comes out. Summerton picks it up, handball backwards. Finds Murphy, who on his natural left foot. Kicks around the corner. It's high. Had a player under it, but he wasn't able to take it. Oh, someone got falconed. In this weather, that is 
going to be very, very painful. Pinty just sort of sat on the ball there. Risky, but it's worked. He's still on it. He's got people on top of him who won't move. Doesn't want to get up. It's tired legs. Despite your metaphor about running high up on the ground. Ball There's up. some tired legs out there, Mike. Whistler goes early, but gets his hand to it. Going to be another ball up. Just almost at the top of the goal square in front of Angerson's goal. Panthers looking for a miracle here. They're going to need one. There were no miracles last weekend. Glenn, can oh, there be one this weekend? I don't think so, Mike. I don't think there will be. I was wondering if you're going to get political on us as soon as you were, said the word miracle. It had to be done. I think, I think Punter's got this game in the bag now. It's all up. No one able to get a clear touch on that. Happy to just lock it up and two up time. As we are nearly 26 minutes into the final term, we're into time. Oh, and there goes the siren. Goes. That's a really big win for Kap a struggling Kapunda team at home in front of their home fans. That's a magnificent character building win. It is. And if you look around the ground, there's a lot of Angerson players just standing there slightly shocked. Trying they, to work out what the hell happened. They had that game politely. for most of the three and a three and a quarter quarters, and then the last three quarters and of the last quarter, bang. They've only got themselves to blame, Glenn. Ill discipline is bad football. Ill discipline is bad football, Mike. And the final score in this game, Kapunda seven goal eight fifty. Beating Angerson four goal eleven thirty five on the Birds Barossa scoreboard, and as we look at the game in retrospect, better players for Angerston probably have to look at the likes of Jackson Murphy was very good, especially in that second half. I thought in defence, Jacob Fiebiger did a great job on Justin Zanandrea for most of the game. Probably Sh Shannon started well. Jay Shannon was good in the first half, but second half drifted out of the contest. Ryan it's Carnelli hard. was pr productive. Yeah, it's hard to find a player that uh, played well across the whole four quarters for Angston, uh, I think. Yes, disappointingly, they didn't have a four-quarter performer, but for Kapunda, I thought Callum Brown was big right across the game, did a lot of good stuff in the first half, but in that last quarter half, especially late in the third and in that bomber blast in the start of the fourth, start of the fourth yep. he stood under some balls <coughs> with courage that was just... His teammates lifted as a result. Yep. Brody uh, Borg did some big things in that second half. Aaron Whistler was, was massive Whistler, in the rut. Whistler for me. Like he led from the middle all the time. He got his hand on the ball. We got it out to his teammates. And when you've got a guy like that winning most of the uh, ruck, you're doing well, aren't you? Yes, he's definitely a huge factor. Hasn't played for about six weeks. Trained for the first time on Thursday night. First well, time in six weeks. That makes it even more impressive performance for me. That's so. definitely, he's probably got to be right up there for them. But some of the guys like Aiden Mudge was good in that second half. Brad Valentine, I thought, with three goals. You can't took go some fantastic him. grabs around the ground. And the ones that he didn't take, he made sure that no one else took the bowl, which is just as important as taking the mark in these conditions. Harry Watke, I thought, was really impressive. Uh, probably a player that we don't give enough credit to. Riley Hennessy did a lot of hard work. Liam Opitz, Opitz in the last defensively, say, the second half. his... His desperation probably led from the front for the Bombers, especially in that last quarter, but the last half in particular. Most of the top ten players on the ground, you'd say, would be Kapunda players so, yeah. across the four quarters. And goal kickers for the day, Glenn. We had two goals for Ryan Carnelli for Angerston. Steve Summerton kicked a single, as did Archie Haddon. Not much else for them for the day. For Kapunda, we have... Brad Valentine with three. Joey Brown with two. Harry Watke, the impressive midfielder, with one. And one for Callum Brown, who I think probably is definitely in the top two for the Bombers on the day. And just to um, go back to that one point that we talked about, at 4.11 on a wet day, you'd understand that, but for the first half of the day, it was a beautiful sunny day, yes. and Angerston really have to rue their discipline, lack of and their accuracy lack of. Yes, they. there's a lot of things that they can look at in this game, why they lost, but there's also a lot of things that they could look at and go, why we should have won. Yeah. So mixed feelings for the Panthers and their supporters at the end of this day. It's going to be a lot of soul-searching at Angerston. 
they're going to have to work out what they've done wrong, what they can do better. But ill-discipline, uh, it's probably something that's been endemic for you a while now in this group. They need to be smarter about the way they go about their footy, need to accept the umpire's decision and just suck it up. They they should be listening to the Bombers singing their team song now and thinking it should have could have been should, us. Should have been us. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. But Kapanda showed a ton of courage in these conditions. They were willing to put their body under the footy and sacrifice for the good of their teammates. So Kapanda, too good on the day. Yep. And I think that's the story tale of the tape and that'll wrap up our live stream from Kapanda for today. We'll be back next week with another live stream. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for helping Glenn today, Glenn. And Sam, if you're talking to us, thank you.